What if I told you I just bought a brand new Kawasaki Ninja 650 for a thousand bucks? Okay, that's not true. The bike is actually 13 years old, but it only has 200 miles on it. And yes, it was a thousand bucks. So on one hand, I got a sweet deal for an almost brand new bike, but on the other hand, it's been neglected for over a decade and I don't even know if the thing will run. So my mission is to create a Kawasaki Ninja 650 rebuild series. I'm gonna be documenting so you guys can follow along all the steps that I take to making this bike basically like new again. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back in time. So as a lot of you guys know, I tow motorcycles on the side and I was giving a customer a quote and he asked me, do you happen to know anybody who might be interested in buying my bike? It's a 2006 Kawasaki Ninja 650R. It only has 300 kilometers. That's about 200 miles. And I was like, okay, awesome. The bike's like super new, but that also means that the tires are gonna be old, the oil, all the fluids, everything's gonna be kinda of old on it, so it's gonna need a lot of work and a lot of love and a lot of parts and labor put into it. We negotiated and I ended up getting the bike for roughly a thousand bucks US or about 1300 bucks Canadian. The rest of this video and probably the next few videos are gonna be about how to get a bike that's been sitting for the last five years back into tip top shape and then basically by the end of it, we're pretty much gonna have a brand new bike for under 2000 bucks. Stay tuned. Now this is a bit of a science experiment. We're kind of trying to see if I can grab a bike and do everything I need to make it as kick-ass as possible. It's the first step. This thing has a pain in the butt to push around. That tells me that the tires are empty. I checked, sure enough, they're at zero PSI. I have a little car air compressor for pumping up my tires. I'm just gonna pop that onto here. All right, so we pumped up the tires and that made it really easy to get the bike onto the lift. Before I do anything else, I really wanna get this battery on the charger right away, so let's pop the seat. So for those who don't know, to get the battery of a Ninja 650 out, you gotta pop the seat off and it should be right about here in this box right there. There's gonna be a little hole right pretty much underneath here for a key to go into. Whoa. Okay, uh, this is different. <laughs> I hope you guys can see that. This looks like once upon a time there was a battery here and there was some extra stuff for a battery trickle charger and now there's no battery at all and in the absence of the battery, what we actually have is what looks like possibly a squirrel, hopefully just a squirrel, or possibly a mouse or rat nest. Because they do that, they grab all kinds of little stuff and they make their little nest. And if you're lucky, that's all they do. And if you're unlucky, they chew up all your wires. So I think the takeaway is disconnect your battery, but leave it in there on a trickle charger. Let's hope that nothing's chewed up. Now, normally I just, don't mind getting my hands dirty, but because we're dealing with rodent stuff here, I'm gonna glove up. This is great, there's leaves, there's candy wrappers. Ugh, look at that, nasty. Cigarette butts. So far the wires look okay, so so far they haven't chewed that up. There's uh, insulation. Oh man, that's gross. Cigarette butt, wood chips. Oh, this looks like it was a dowel or something that got, this got chewed up. That might've been a Hershey Kiss. This is the only thing in here that might have actually been a motorcycle part, so we're gonna put that aside somewhere safe. That's no big deal. I'm just really happy that nothing bit my fingers off. The wiring still looks okay. So I'm actually gonna eliminate some of these extra wires, trace them back, make sure I don't need them. As long as I don't need them, they can go. So I'm not sure what kind of battery charger this was for, but it doesn't work with any of the ones I have. So I'm just gonna throw it out. 
The thing is I'm left with this little ring right here and I don't know what it is, where it's supposed to go. And I can't really trace it back because it kind of gets buried. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to go the positive or the negative battery terminal. If I get it wrong, I might blow a fuse somewhere. So I think for right now, I'm going to leave it out. I'm going to buy a battery for this bike, drop it in place, and see what works just leaving this disconnected. This video was just a quick intro to the series. In upcoming ones, I'll be changing oil, flushing coolant and brake fluid, and dealing with some bad surprises along the way, and maybe even hopefully getting this thing running. If you're a Ninja 650 owner or just want to see if I can get a basically brand new bike for two grand or less, please hit that like and subscribe button to check out all future videos and help support the creation of this Ninja 650 rebuild series. Thanks guys, I really appreciate it. Ride safe.